with you today in an effort to bring you to a place of self-examination. For you to understand that there's a motive behind everything we do. And for you to reflect, if you may, on the very motive by which you do things. Amen. I strongly believe that if we examine the motives by which we do things and are doing things, we will make less mistakes in our lives. We'll avoid hurting other people. Amen. Understanding the motive by which you are doing things is going to help you with your spiritual growth. When you do things just to do them, you don't grow. If you are in church today because, you know, uh, you go to church on Sundays and people go to church on Sundays, you're not going to grow. You're just going to church. And many people are just going to church. They're not growing in the Lord. Amen. They have no expectation. And so we have to understand why we do what we do. The question is, why are you here today? What are you expecting from the Lord? What's your motive for being here? And that's where I want to go with my message today and help you to discover the proper motive for everything you do. And I can tell you the number one motive for you being here today should be worshiping the Lord. Come on, church. Let's begin with why you're here today. Amen. It should be that I'm going to the house of the Lord to worship him. I'm going to hear from God. I'm going to be built up in my faith. Listen, if you don't have that in mind, you're not going to receive much out of what is taking place even now in the house of the Lord. The message won't even make sense to you. If you're here because you're accompanying someone to church and that's the only reason, you're not going to get much out of the service. But you got to make up in your mind and make up in your heart, I'm going to hear from God today. I'm going to find direction for my life Praise the name of the Lord. I'm going to seek God's protection. I'm going to seek God's blessing upon my life and upon my family. Are you with me? Come on, church. I'm telling you, if you will let that be your motive, you will find this place to be so enjoyable and a place that you can't wait to get to on a Sunday morning. Amen? Amen. But if it's for any other reason, you're going to find yourself dragging. Amen? You're going to come in at any time. You're not going to participate. You're going to spectate and not participate. So this morning, God is calling you to examine the motives by which you do what you do. And so as your pastor... I'm sharing this message with you this morning, praise the Lord, because that's my responsibility, to help you to grow in the Lord, amen, to create opportunities for you to dance and sing and worship the Lord, but most importantly, that you grow in the Lord. Oh, let's give the Lord another hand clap today. 
God wants to get you and I to a place whereby we not only do things, but we know why we do what we do. Amen? In the secular world, this is called psychotherapy. Amen? Psychotherapy. You know, why, why did he react that way? Why did she react that way? Why are you crying? And sometimes they go way back to your childhood in psychotherapy. Amen? But in the kingdom of God, this is called divine wisdom. Are you with me? Divine wisdom. Praise God. Praise God. And uh, there is divine wisdom, and I want to impart that to you on today. The message really came yesterday. Someone came to visit me uh, for some counseling. They were getting ready to make a decision, and they wanted to know, Pastor, will you help seek the Lord with me concerning my decisions? And I can say that sometimes we have made some bad decisions simply because we did not consult the Lord. And some of you know what I'm talking about. Amen. And it's so easy to decide to do something and not pray about it. Most people make decisions and don't even pray about it. Amen. But spiritual growth. God wants to bring you to a place where before you act, you seek the Lord. Oh, let's give the Lord a hand clap today. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. And like I said, you would avoid some of the tragic mistakes that you have made. Can you imagine before you made that last decision, before you were disappointed about your decision, that you had uh, sought the Lord about it? Amen? That you had put your motive where it needs to be? Church, it must first be to glorify the Lord. Are you with me? Our very purpose of our existence is to glorify the Lord. And can you imagine how happy our lives will be if when we do things, we're doing them to glorify God? The Bible tells us, seek ye first the kingdom of God. That ought to be our motive in whatever we do, that we seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Amen. Can you just imagine if we make a decision today as a church family that, you know what, I'm going to glorify God with my actions. Church, can you begin to imagine that? Can you see yourself at such a place? Amen. That, you know what, what I'm about to do I will only do it if it's going to please God. Oh, come on, church. I said I will only do it, I'll only make that decision if it's going to please God. The Apostle Paul put it this way. He says, I would rather please God than man. Are you with me? God wants to bring us to a place. It's good to come here and sing and dance and clap our hands and have a good time like we had this morning. But you're not going to grow by just dancing. You're not going to grow by just singing and clapping your hands. And I love a good time. I love, to, I love the, the, the feel of what we were feeling in our worship service this morning. Amen? But spiritual growth comes when our motives are in the right place. Spiritual growth comes when we put Christ first. Oh, tell the Lord, thank you, somebody. And so today, God is calling us to a place where we examine and weigh our motives. The King James Version say, weigh your motives. Amen. Praise God. Praise God, praise God. And so I have some scripture to share with you today to help bring the message home. <clears throat> praise God. And the first scripture that I want to share with you this morning comes from 1 Kings chapter 13, 8 through 14. 1 Kings chapter 13, 
8 through 14. Amen. And this is where I come down and look in your face. Make sure you don't fall asleep. Amen. Nobody sleep? Nobody sleep? Nobody get hurt. Amen. Praise God. No blinky blinky in this place today. Praise the Lord. And I'm glad everyone is alert. Amen. You know, some church by now, but the minute the pastor starts speaking, Praise God. You know how I, I was at a church, I was preaching, and uh, this Italian gentleman, it's the loudest snore I've ever heard. The minute I started preaching, <laughs> amen, praise God. Maybe my wife would tell me what I said, but I, I did say something. That just woke him up. Amen. I just, I just, you remember early? But I, I just said, I just said something. And he just jumped. I probably said, Jesus is coming. I don't remember what I said, but I just said something deeply biblical. The brother just jumped. Amen. No blinky blinky. Praise the Lord. So we're talking about our motives for doing things. And so I've gone to scripture on your behalf to look at a king of Israel. His name was Saul. Amen. His name was Saul. Praise the Lord. So Saul at this time was king of Israel. Israel. He had just become a king and he had established an army like Israel had never had before. He established this army. And the Bible tells us that the army consisted of 3,000 soldiers. Israel had never had an army like that before. 1 Samuel chapter 13. 1 Samuel chapter 13. Why don't we stand and read so we just get the scripture within us and then I'll explain it to you. Praise God. 1 Samuel chapter 13. Can we read aloud? And then I'll break it down. Saul reigned one year and when he had reigned two years over Israel, Saul chose him, read aloud, 3,000 men of Israel, whereof 2,000 were with Saul in Michmash and in Mount Bethel, and 1,000 were with Jonathan in Gibeah of the Benjamites. And the rest of the people he sent every man to his tent. And Jonathan smote the garrison of the Philistines that was in Geba, and the Philistines heard of it. And Saul blew the trumpet throughout all the land, saying, Let the Hebrews hear. And all Israel heard that Saul had smitten a garrison of the Philistines, and that Israel also had in abomination with the Philistines, and the people were called together after Saul to Gilgal. And the Philistines gathered themselves to fight with Israel, 30,000 chariots and 6,000 horsemen and people to the sand, which are is on the seashore in, in the multitude. And they came up and pitched in Michmash eastward from Beth Haven. When the men of Israel saw that they were in a strait, for the people were distressed, then the people did hide themselves in caves and in thickets and in rocks and in high places and in pits. And some of the Hebrews went over Jordan 
to the land of Gad and Gilead. As for Saul, he was yet in Gilgal, and the people followed him trembling. And he tarried seven days according to the set time that Samuel had appointed. But Samuel came not to Gilgal, and the people were scattered from him. And Saul said, Bring hither a burnt offering to me, and peace offering. And he offered the burnt offering. And it came to pass that as soon as he had made an end of offering the burnt offering, behold, Samuel came, and Saul went out to meet him, then he might salute him. And Samuel said, What hast thou done? And Saul said, Because I saw the people were scattered from me, and that thou camest not within the days appointed, and that the Philistines gathered themselves together in Micmac, therefore said I, The Philistines will come down now upon me to Gilgal, and I have not made supplication unto the Lord. I forced myself therefore and offered a burnt offering. Let's read that again. I forced myself, therefore, and offered a burnt offering. And Samuel said to Saul, Thou hast done foolishly. Thou Read aloud. Thou hast not kept the commandments of the Lord thy God, which he commanded thee. For now would the Lord have established thy kingdom upon Israel forever. Church, sometime. Our motives cause us to lose on our blessings. Did you get that? Your motives can cause you to lose out on all that God has in store for you. Amen. Let's read the next verse. We'll close there. But now thy kingdom shall not continue. The Lord hath sought him a man after his own heart. And the Lord hath commanded him to be captain over his people, because thou hast not kept that which the Lord commanded thee. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. You may be seated. Praise God. So here was Saul. Amen. He had reigned over Israel for one year. He was in the second year of his reign. Amen. And he had put together this great army, the army of Israel, over 3,000 men. Israel had never seen an army like that. And Saul was in charge of 2,000, and his son Jonathan was in charge of 1,000. And the Bible tells us that Jonathan, with his 1,000 men, smote the garrison of the Philistines that were in Geba. Amen? And the Philistines heard of it. And listen to what Saul did. Amen? The Bible said Saul blew the trumpet throughout all the land, saying, let the Hebrews hear. Amen? Saul blew his own trumpet. Did you get that? Instead of acknowledging Jonathan, his own son, for the victory he had won for Israel, Saul blew the trumpet and used it to draw attention to himself. Listen, when you do things to draw attention to yourself, your motive is in the wrong place. Amen? When you do things... And the question is, God is asking you today with this message, why are you here? Why are you doing what you are doing? That's how we started out. Why did you come to church today? What is your motive? Is it to let those around you know that you're a good person? Is, is really what it is? Amen. You know, some people's motive to come to church is just to see other folks. Yes. Amen. I want to see what she's going to wear today. I want to see what he's going to wear today. I want to see a pastor going to wear the same suit. Church, I'm telling you the truth today. Amen. People 
come to church for a lot of different reasons. Are you with me? Some churches are packed out. They're, they, they're not growing in the Lord. They're not experiencing the power of God. And church, I'm just trying to get you with this message today that you will just get yourself ready. Come with the right motive. Praise God. Amen. So that God can do what he desires to do in your life. If you come with the wrong motive, you will never, ever experience the power of God. You'll be on the outside looking in, always having a question. What are they doing? Why are they doing it? Are you with me? Why are they so loud? Why are they clapping their hands? Why are they dancing? Amen. What is all of that about? But if you come to get wet, you'll go in the red one. Are you with me? If you come to get wet with the Spirit of God, you will, you will get in the river, you will flow with the worship, you will flow with the praise. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Your motive should never be to come to church to criticize. Amen. Never. And I've been in churches where people do nothing but criticize. Praise God. So church, we've got to get our motives right. Paul, mo I mean, Saul, Saul's motive was all about himself. That he couldn't even celebrate his own son's victory. Amen. Blew a trumpet. That's like people. So, did you know that their own trumpet? Huh? They just blow. And listen, you don't, feel, you don't see them. Am I telling the truth? If they don't have the limelight, you understand? Ain't no worship. I'm telling you the truth. They don't get the mention the team they're on and leave their name and that's one of the things I always have to be careful about when I talk about who organized this and who organized that I better mention everybody's job for me because sometimes I forget what it can Listen, if you've been in church long enough, you know what I'm talking about. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Have you been there? You don't see folks after that. And when you check, you didn't mention my name. So this attitude that he couldn't allow to receive the praise. May we such a motive, church. Amen. In the way you relate to people. You know, some folks, if it's funny to them, it is a joke. Hmm? Everybody else could be laughing. But to them, it is If there's no fun in it, are you with me? If there's no fun, they don't see the reason why. Everything must be funny because all they want is to laugh and have fun. And some folks, their motive is just to get a thrill. Amen? Their reason for inviting you, their reason for, for including you is just so that they can get a, a thrill out of it. Praise the Lord. In other words, people have selfish motives. You can't serve God and have selfish motives. You can't love, say you love God and have selfish motives. The reason I love you is this. Amen? Praise the name of the Lord. So church is a very simple message. 
It's one that God wants you to, to look at the inside. Why do you do what you do? Amen. Why do you do what you do? And church, let me tell you, you can do the right thing and have the wrong motive. Did you know that? You do, you, you're going to do the right thing, but your heart is not in the right place. And so it was with Saul. And he paid a big price because of his motive. Listen, man looks at the outside, but God looks at the heart. The Bible tells us that God weighs our motive. Can you put Proverbs chapter 16, verse 2 up there? My theme today is that you must examine your motives. Amen? Examine your motives. You listen, God sees. Amen? God God sees, God examines, and God weighs your motive. Let's read Proverbs 16, 2 together. All the ways of a man are clean in his own eyes. Be careful. Hold on one minute. Be careful how you see things. Amen? Because some folks, if it's not about them, it ain't going anywhere. Amen? That work is not going to go anywhere if they're not going to get the praise. All the ways of a man are clean in his own eyes. In other words, be careful how you assess or you do what you're doing. Amen? Be careful how you do what you're doing. Amen? What's motivating your thought? All the ways of a man are clean in his own eyes. And sometimes you're doing things and you think you're doing it for the right reason, but you're really doing it for the wrong reason. Why? Because all the ways of a man are clean in his own eyes. Amen? Even people, some of the biggest criminals, they believe that, you know, the, 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 the wrong that they're doing, that it's okay. Everyone is motivated. It's our motives that cause us to do things. Amen? That's why, you know, uh, in court, a lot of people are, 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 the judgment is premeditated. Premeditated. It's very rare you do something without thinking about it. As humans, that's what separates us from animals. Animals instinctively do what they do. You go, you stand before a hungry lion, you go get eaten. Amen. It doesn't matter how nice you look, how well dressed you are. Amen. Did you just come from the nail salon or not? The lion don't care. Don't care what you're wearing. They're hungry, they're going to eat you. Are you with me? But as humans, God has made us different from animals. That's what set us above the animals. We think before we act. Church, you have to think before you act. Don't just go and do what you do like an animal does it. Amen? Understand why you're doing what you're doing. Praise the name of the Lord. It can save you from a lot of heartache and disappointment. And many of us have done things without thinking why we're doing it. We allow someone to lead us into it, church. Am I right? And you end up doing things, going places, amen, wasting your time. Because you didn't stop to reason. Why am I doing this? Am I pleasing God with my action? Am I going where God would want me to go? Praise the name of the Lord. And so here was Saul blowing his own trumpet, satisfying his own ego. Amen? Taking Jonathan's praise, his son's praise. Hallelujah. 
just so that people will hear about him. That's what the scripture says. <clears throat> so what happened? It worked against him. Because the Philistines heard about Saul. Amen. And so the Philistines organized an army ten times bigger than the, than the uh, army of Israel. The Bible said there were over 30,000 horsemen. I think it's what it says, and 10,000 warriors. Amen. A mighty army. The army was so big that Saul ran. The Bible says he ran to Gilgal. Amen. And his soldiers, read the text, and the soldiers ran with him. Why? Because his motive was not right. Amen. And you think he would learn his lesson. And when we read further in the text as we did, he came to Gilgal. And it was customary before Israel went into battle that they would consult the Lord. Amen. And so the Bible says that, you know, he waited seven days according to the set time that Samuel had appointed for them to, to, to offer a sacrifice. They would offer a sacrifice. The, the prophet, the man of God, would seek the Lord. Amen? Concerning, on their behalf, how they should rage or fight in the battle. And he was supposed to wait for the man of God. Amen? Just imagine you all come to church. And so, you know, pastor went to pick somebody up. Amen. And you know what? Pastor ain't here. Pass me a Bible. And you just get up there. Amen. You have not been called by God. I'm just using that as an example. Amen. Brother Prince, do you like preaching? I love to pick on Brother Prince sometimes. <laughs> Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Yeah. And so here saw he did not wait. Listen, church, God is a God of order. Are you with me? There are some things that you're not supposed to touch. There are some things that you were not called to do. And I believe that if people would operate in their calling, amen, the church, hallelujah, would avoid some of the splits. The church would avoid some of the confusion that has occurred in the church. And some of you know what I'm talking about because you have been into churches that have split. Their church is splitting right, left, and center. The simple reason is folks won't wait. They won't wait. And so it was with Samuel, with, with Saul. He, he wouldn't wait. He started counting the days. And after seven days, Brother Claude, he's like, you know what? Samuel ain't coming. Pass me the bullock. I'm king. I have a right to offer up the sacrifice. And that role was for the priest. It was for the pastor. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. You know, there are offices. My role is the office of the senior pastor of the church. Praise the name of the Lord. And while I'm the senior pastor, you have to allow me to act in that office. You may even be able to do it better than I can, but you have to wait on the Lord. Oh, come on, church. Am I preaching the word today? Am I preaching the word today? It is the word of God. Look what happened to, uh, to, 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 to Saul. Amen? Look what happened to Saul. And the Bible says that, and he tarried seven days according to the set time that Samuel had appointed, but came not to, the, to Gilgal, and the people were scattered. And Saul said, bring hither a burnt offering to me and peace offering. 
and he offered up the burnt offering. He did a terrible thing. His motive was completely off church. Amen. He was full of self-pride. He had selfish reasons. Praise the name of the Lord. He wanted to draw attention to himself. He wanted to usurp the man of God and to shame the man of God and to belittle the man of God. I can do it myself. And that kind of motive is not pleasing in the sight of God. Amen. And church, we have to be careful of these egos. We have to be careful of these selfish motives. Amen? Praise the Lord. And so what did he do? He offered up a burnt offering. Hallelujah. And the Bible says, And it came to pass that as soon as he had made an end of offering the burnt offering, behold, the man of God, Samuel, came, and Saul went out to meet him, that he might salute him. You see his motive? Not that he would salute Samuel, but that Samuel would salute him, because now he took the position of the priest. He usurped his authority. In other words, I did it. And his ego was telling him, you can do it, I can do it better. Yeah. Hallelujah. And he went out looking for self-praise. He had drawn attention to himself. Be careful how you draw attention to yourself. Be careful why, you, why you're doing what you're doing. Amen. Remember to ask yourself the question, why am I doing? what I am doing. And God wants to bring us all to that place. That's my message today. He wants to bring us to that place. Praise the name of the Lord. Because if your motive is wrong, you can end up in a very, very serious place. And Saul, and, and Saul was about to find out. Praise God. So verse 11 says, And Samuel said, what have you done? And Saul says, because I saw that the people were scattered from me. See that? His whole motive for offering up a sacrifice unto the Lord was because he thought the people had scattered. Amen? The people, I wasn't, in other words, you know, Samuel, I wasn't getting the attention I deserved. They weren't clapping loud enough. They weren't shouting loud enough. Amen. Their attention was, was not on me. I had a problem with that. Amen. So because I saw that they were scattered from me. And that you came not within the days. You know what? You were late. If only you were on time. This would not have happened. In other words, Samuel, what did you expect me to do? Did you think I was going to sit there and wait till you come? Huh? Are you getting the message now, church? Did you think I was going to wait for you to come? As a matter of fact, you can offer up sacrifice. I can offer up a better sacrifice. Praise the name of the Lord. He had a Cain spirit. Remember how Cain killed Abel? Why? Because Abel offered up a better sacrifice. Praise the name of the Lord. We, got, we have to understand why we do what we do. Amen. I'm telling you today, if this week from here on you assess why you do what you do, you'll do it better. Are you with me? Come on, church. I'm getting ready to wrap it up. If you will discover why you're doing what you're doing, you will do it better. You will do it, and it will please God. Amen. 
because you're going to do it to glorify him. Oh, let's give him another hand clap in here today. <laughs> Finally, in closing, and Samuel said to Saul, thou hast done foolishly. Thou hast not kept the commandment of the Lord thy God, which he commanded you. For now would the Lord have established your kingdom upon Israel forever. You would reign, Saul. Hallelujah. You will be victorious in battle. You would be known as the greatest king Israel has ever had. The spirit of the Lord will be upon you forever. You will be known, hallelujah, down from generation to generation. They'll speak of you, Saul. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. But now, thy kingdom shall not continue. In other words, you will be cut off because of your motive. Your motive can cut you off from the blessings of God. Are you with me? Your motive can stop you from receiving all that God has in store for you. Your motive. Your reason for doing what you did. Amen. Your selfish motive. Your pride. Your arrogancy. Amen. Has stopped you from receiving the blessings of God. From you prospering. Amen. And let me tell you, you don't get your motive right, you can affect the blessings of generation upon generation. There are some generations are cursed because someone's motive was in the wrong place. Oh, give the Lord a hand clap, church. Amen. Thou hast done foolishly. Thou hast not kept the commandments of the Lord thy God, which he commanded thee. For now would the Lord have established thy kingdom forever, but now thy kingdom shall not continue. The Lord hath sought him a man after his own heart. Because his motive was in the wrong place, he was replaced. Amen? I could have entitled this message, Replaced by Your Motive. Are you with me? Replaced by your motive. Amen? That which is deep down inside of you, that is directing you to do what you do. It's in the wrong place. Amen? Man may not see it. You may cover it up, but you can't hide your motive from God. God sees God knows, God examines, God weighs our motive. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise God. And the Lord hath commanded him to be captive over his people because thou hast not kept that which the Lord commanded thee. Amen. You didn't control your motive. Are you with me? That selfish drive, that greed, you didn't control it. You allowed it to control you. And each one of us, you need to examine what's driving you, what's motivating you. Where, you, where is your heart in that which you're doing? Amen. Are you doing it for the Lord? Or are you doing it for you? Father, we give you thanks and praise, honor and glory. God, I love your word. God, I love your word. Praise God. I thank you for this call on my life. Lord God, to interpret your word to your people, to preach your word to your people. 
that you'll give me the strength to continue to do it and the wisdom to rightly divide your word, God. For it is so important to help us in our spiritual growth. Lord, you have spoken out of your word. You have spoken with these lips today. Lord, to teach us how to make sure our motives are in the right place. And so I pray for each one under the sound of my voice that this week they'll think about this message. And God, this message will motivate them to do the right thing. Make the right decision. To love unconditionally. Not looking for anything in return. When you present to them someone who is in need of help, they will help without looking to be helped. That God, when you present to us the opportunity to give, we will give without considering what will be given to us in the name of Jesus. That God, this week, when you present us with an opportunity to serve, that we will serve without, Lord God, serving in a way that we will be served in the name of Jesus. God, just help us. Help us to examine our motives in the name of Jesus. I thank you for our church. I thank you for these people. I thank you for what you're doing in our lives by the power of your word in Jesus' name. Bless us, Lord, as we leave this place, but never from your presence. I pray your hand will be upon each and every one of us. I pray your divine covering will be over these people. The blood of Jesus will cover them. That God, in the end, you will present us righteous unto our Father in heaven. In the name of Jesus, God strengthen us. Make us ready. Prepare our hearts for whatever this week will unfold to us in the name of Jesus. We know we can't go through this week in our own strength. We need the strength of the Lord. So strengthen us now as a church family. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Shout praise the Lord. We hope you'll worship with us again next week right here on live stream at 10 a.m. Spring of Water, changing lives for the better.